Graves was an amazing, amazing musician. He grew up in the Midwest and he had heard my Columbia albums and was really drawn to what I was attempting to do musically. And he came out here quite specifically to meet me and hopefully begin a musical relationship. We immediately clicked. Uh, he was extremely fearless and adventurous as a musician, which is something I really value in colleagues that I'm playing with. Harmonically wide open, technically extremely adept, very powerful player, powerful rhythmic thrust, and just open to this multi-genre integration that I was committed to at that point. And he quickly got himself an electric bass, became super proficient on that as well as continuing with his upright. And so he was really roaring musically. And at around the same time, George Marsh came out to the West Coast and apparently meeting me and playing with me was also very much on his mind. George had had a multi-genre experience already uh, playing with uh, rock groups and stuff and when he was out here when I met him he was playing with the Loading Zone and uh, other groups and had had a lot of experience in Chicago playing free music so he was really adept and open to free improvisation so he was just perfect for this multi-genre music I wanted to make and he and Mel immediately clicked musically so the three of us just felt like we had a an equilateral triangle going musically with equal sides and everybody contributing to this music in the center and it was very exciting in a, a time when I was hiring engineers to build me sound modules and devices that could create unusual sounds you know back there there was no you know synthesizers that you could just go down to the corner music store and come out with a synthesizer and with a keyboard on it and play it I mean, that was back in the days, the only synthesizer around was a was a, a Moog synthesizer with a patch bay, you know, one of those huge things you make one note at a time, you know. You know. So I was using the electronic keyboards that were available that appealed to me at that time. I got a Honer clavinet, which had a great sound, and I found somebody in L.A. who would who would make modifications of the way the hammers hit the strings so that it would hit it on an angle so if you press the string a little harder it would bend so you get you could you bend it like a guitar so the honer clavinet was a great instrument for me and i got a farfisa organ that had a very special sound i didn't want to just sound like every other b3 hammond player i wanted something unusual and the farfisa organ answered that problem for me and at the time we went in to do this album the name of this terrain those were the only two electric keyboards that i had i used that the, the acoustic piano and then i also on that date i played tambourine african thumb piano melodica that was the other keyboard instrument that you, know, you blow into the play it sounds like a quasi accordion harmonica sound uh, and I had some sound altering devices and then of course lots of foot pedals that would create fuzz and wah-wah and all these other kinds of sounds and even back then before my entire later rig materialized it would take tremendous amounts of time to set this thing up uh, hours really so I mean getting this thing set up in the studio was a magnum opus and uh, we finally got it got it set up and, and we were ready to roll and it was an exciting weekend.